You have put in all that hard work on becoming a doctor of pharmacy, and now it's time to show those programs what you've been up to for the past six plus years. Here's how you do it. Hello everyone and welcome to Happy Farm Life. My name is Sierra Richard. I'm a pharmacist and a PGY1 resident who is wanting to help you get the residency of your dreams and in turn that career you've always been looking for. Before we jump in, I do want to do a little disclaimer here that the advice I'm sharing in this video is based on my own personal experience, which may be different from yours. So when you look at this advice that I'm giving you, think about it from your perspective and take the pieces that you need and leave those that you don't. Okay, with that in mind, here we go. You probably look at your forecast application and be like, the education section? That's like the simplest part of the application. Wrong actually not totally wrong, but if you do it wrong, it can be one of the most stressful pieces of your application. If not done properly, you can lose your transcript, it may never show up, or it may show up, but it may show up late, your application could be incomplete, and you will be so stressed out. From experience, I know this. So here are some tips to get you through this section with the least amount of stress possible and truly make it the easiest section there is. Tip number one is submit your transcript early. One of the questions I've gotten several times is do you wait for your fall grades? Oftentimes your fall grades will help you if you've been on rotations and you've done really well. They can be additional A's that's gonna look better and maybe even push you over a GPA requirement that you're just not quite at. The problem with waiting is the fact that you may not have a transcript there at all, which automatically disqualifies you anyway. So what I recommend doing is going ahead, send that transcript without your fall grades, and then you always have the opportunity to send an additional one to be added on later on in your application process that may even still be there before the deadlines, but at least you have one of them there. Another big thing that you want to think about here is, is it better to have nothing or is it better to have something. Tip number two is knowing your program's requirements. Every program has different requirements for each piece of the application. However, if you're doing some sort of degree program, such as your MBA while you're doing your residency, they're likely going to require more transcripts, such as official transcripts, from your undergraduate institutions as well as your pharmacy transcripts. So you want to make sure whatever you're sending to your program meets whatever qualifications are necessary to get in. The last thing you want to do is miss an application opportunity and an interview opportunity because you didn't read those requirements and you didn't have the right transcripts sent in. Don't do that. Tip number three is to send in the transcript request form whenever you submit your transcripts. All you have to do is go into the transcript section, the educational opportunities, and right next to your university there will be a little icon, and you just click that, it gives you a form, you fill that out, and then attach it when you send your transcript off. And the reason I recommend doing this is I've actually talked to them about how this works, and it basically allows them to scan it and immediately put it onto your program, whereas they have to do a little bit more searching. It's a little bit more time consuming and may delay your receipt of your transcript into your actual application by two to three days because it is a lot of extra work and you're put into the pile that's, oh, this is extra work versus the one they can scan and upload right away. Tip number four is if your transcript doesn't come in on time, don't panic. I can tell you from personal experience that this is absolutely traumatizing. So I had done my transcript early, but there was a hold that I couldn't get removed because nobody knew why it was there and it wasn't actually supposed to be there and it was a whole giant mess. But what I learned from that is sometimes your transcript doesn't come in on time and it's not always your fault. But at that point, you have to own up to the fact that yes, something has went wrong, it's gonna be a little bit late, and so my early programs, I actually reached out to them. I sent them an unofficial transcript, apologized for the situation, explained that there was a hold and it took a week and a half to get removed, which delayed it because of the holidays and apologized for all of the confusion, offered them that unofficial transcript to prove that yes, the grades that I had sent you are correct and I do qualify for your program. Not only did I get interviews at all of those places, I actually matched at one of them. 
So I promise you it's not the end of the world if you've done your due diligence and you still submit it early. Don't wait till the last second and then try to do this. But if you have done that and unexpected things come up or it gets lost in the mail, hopefully your programs will be as understanding as mine were and still let you interview with them. Tip number five is to make sure everything is completely filled out. One thing that can easily get missed is adding your degree. So on the left hand side you have that transcript request form, but on the right hand side there's a little add degree button. So you want to add that and include that you're getting your doctor of pharmacy degree. If you're getting an MBA as well, include that you're getting your MBA and make sure all of those pieces are filled out or else you can't submit your application. And you may be like, why can't I do this? This is why. Or if you're somebody who does do that dual degree program, if you miss one of them, that could be a crucial opportunity to highlight the fact that not only are you getting your PharmD, but your MBA or other degree as well. So you wanna make sure all of those are included in your application. Thank you all for watching. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button below. I'm gonna be doing tons more residency videos. You can also check out some of my other residency prep videos in the description below. If you do have any questions at all, please leave them in that comments below. I'm going to be checking these up until I know the deadlines go until like January 6th-ish plus. So I'm gonna be checking those messages every single day and responding to you to make sure that you are 100% prepared to hit that submit button. Good luck with your residency applications and I will see you next time. Bye.